Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today I wanted to talk about Planet Nine yet again. And a new discovery, or actually, a new analysis, that sort of suggests that maybe, just maybe, there is nothing there to look for. In other words, maybe the Planet Nine doesn't actually exist after all, based on some of the new data that we have now. So let's talk about this and welcome to the Math. You might already know the story behind Planet 9 and how a lot of scientists got really excited that we saw evidence of another planet in our solar system, but I wanted to also quickly give you the idea of why we thought Planet 9 existed. So a few years ago, while looking at the distant parts of the solar system, especially using some of the new telescopes, the scientists started to discover these extreme TNO objects or trans-Neptunian objects, objects orbiting way past Neptune that you can see right here whose orbit is actually quite insignificant in comparison to the orbits of these other objects. And surprisingly, a lot of them were kind of pointed in a similar direction as you see right here. Because of this unusual direction, and also because of the way that they were shaped, basically being very eccentric, as if something orbiting here was pulling at them, certain scientists proposed the hypothesis that this was due to a very unusual object, most likely a planetary object, orbiting on the outskirts of the solar system. And although this did make sense back then, it was still a hypothesis and not really a theory at all. There was still quite a lot of work to do before we can actually confirm the existence of the planet, and even today many different scientists are actually actively looking for it by, well, literally looking at the night skies and trying to see if we've actually already discovered it and just haven't really acknowledged its existence. In other words, maybe it's already somewhere in the data that we currently have. Now, that's of course the current assumption. But there are a lot of new papers coming out, with some papers now suggesting quite the opposite. That the reason we believe that Planet 9 existed there is actually completely psychological. It's basically a bias. And the scientists who published this paper very recently make a very very good point in their explanation. So first of all, what do they actually have for their data? And what the scientists in this paper did was collect more data. Essentially, they tried to look for even more of the TNO objects and try to see if this pattern persists. If a lot of these objects are still pointed in the same direction, obviously then we can kind of assume that, yeah, there's something going on, there's probably a planet somewhere. But if we discover more objects that are not doing this, then, well, we made a mistake. A lot of this new data comes from this wonderful telescope known as OSOS that was able to discover over 800 different TNOs over the past few years and add it to the collection of the bodies we already knew about. And just to help you understand how much we've advanced in the last few decades, the first TNO except for Pluto was this object right here discovered in 1992. This was approximately 28 years ago and since then we've discovered thousands upon thousands of objects in this vicinity with some objects like this one right here, Eris, being even larger in size than Pluto and some objects like the mysterious potato shaped Haumea I've talked about in one of the previous videos even has its own moons and rings. So there's definitely a lot of interesting stuff going on in this particular region. But what about the Planet 9 evidence? So in the recent new analysis using OSOS data and also some of the other data from other telescopes, this is what this new picture looks like. In other words, what the scientists now see is that these unusual orbits are pointed in all directions, not just in that specific one direction we saw with these initial papers about Planet 9. And they actually give a really really good explanation to all of this. It's known as observational bias, and it really has to do with when the scientists are allowed to use telescopes to observe the stars or when opportunities for best observations happen. These initial few observations that pointed at the existence of Planet 9 initially could only be discovered during a certain period of the year when essentially you're actually looking at just one direction in the night skies. In other words, when the scientists were using these telescopes, they were kind of pretty much only doing it by looking in the similar direction and were only discovering the objects in this part of the night skies. They were also limited by seasonal changes, by weather changes, and also because certain seasons are more rainy than other seasons, they were obviously not able to observe the night skies during the entire year, during the 365 days. So because of this, this created a bias where we could only see stars 
and uh, we could only see objects in a single part of the night skies. They were also unlikely to discover any so-called TNOs near the galactic plane, where they're actually hidden by the very bright stars in the middle of our own galaxy. So this region here is also more or less unexplored when it comes to TNOs, which actually leaves an entire huge area, huge region of the night skies that have never really been explored by these really powerful telescopes in order to see if there are any trans-Neptunian objects there too with these unusual orbits. And when the scientists using this new OSOS uh, survey essentially took these biases into consideration, all of this changed dramatically. They suddenly started seeing these objects pretty much everywhere, suggesting that nothing was actually mysteriously pulling at these objects to have them point in a single direction. Instead, this pull was actually happening in all directions, and that required a new explanation to what was happening to their orbits, and also kind of removed the need for this Planet 9 explanation as well. And with close to a thousand new objects discovered in this region, that's uh, essentially past the orbit of Neptune, with some objects being only slightly bigger than a typical asteroid, but some objects being a few thousand kilometers in size, we now have enough data to start making a hypothesis into a theory. And it looks like Planet 9 does not unfortunately survive this, at least the way it looks right now. And so the new question here is of course, what caused the orbits here to be so unusual? Why are they so weird and so extremely eccentric compared to everything else inside the uh, inner solar system? If there is no planet here acting on them, something else must have caused this. And there are actually explanations that do not require anything except for the evolution of the solar system. One such explanation from a couple of years ago involves the dynamic evolution of the solar system with the migration of Neptune itself, and they are able to recreate all of the effects we're observing with just Neptune. The explanation here involves the evolution of the early solar system and the so-called planetary migration, and it also combines some of its initial assumptions assuming that there was actually a planet in the solar system that's now missing. But it's probably not planet 9 that's orbiting somewhere on the outskirts. It's most likely a planet that escaped and became something completely different, such as a rogue planet. The main idea here is that during the early solar system, there were probably five giant planets, five gas giants. And one of them was orbiting somewhere between Saturn and Uranus, but at some point became destabilized and because of the interaction with Jupiter, got kicked out of the solar system and became what's known as a rogue planet, probably traveling somewhere out there in the Milky Way galaxy. The remaining four planets now had a slightly more unstable solar system, with the new stability coming from some of the motion of the outer gas giants. In this case, the motion of Neptune as it slowly traveled to the outskirts of the solar system where it's currently located. As it moved farther and farther away, it started to influence the objects that were already in these orbits here and essentially made their orbits more eccentric. Although that's a very basic explanation of what this paper right here talks about. In a nutshell, it tries to explain how Neptune's advance in the solar system changed the orbits of these objects to be more eccentric, which could definitely explain why a lot of these orbits look the way that they do today. In other words, it does not require Planet 9 at all, it just requires Neptune to migrate to the outskirts. But this of course does not really solve the problem of the initial discoveries of certain uh, objects pointing in a similar direction. So even though we now found a lot of other TNOs that are pointing in other directions, there are still these few objects here that are slightly more concentrated in one specific direction compared to some of the other objects. Now this probably is not really going to be explained as a planet doing this, but there might be something else going on here, such as maybe even a passage of a star that influences the solar system that could explain this in the future. For now, all this means is that as we discover more and more of these TNOs or trans neptunian objects, we're probably at some point going to put the Planet 9 hypothesis to rest and not really require it to explain our observations. And so all of this could be explained with nothing but psychology. First of all, our need for this extraordinary explanation to the somewhat simple observations, and second of all, our biases when looking at the night skies. Because as the new research established, once we start looking everywhere else, we kind of start seeing things that do not support these biases at all. But does this mean that we should stop looking for Planet 9 completely? Well, not really. First of all, by looking for Planet 9, we've already been able to discover so much more. And second of all, 
it still could really exist there, but just not really for the reasons we initially thought. Remember, we do think that there was a planet in our solar system that's currently missing, and for all we know, it maybe did not get kicked out completely out of the solar system and instead became a kind of a distant orbiting object. But for now, we don't really know and we definitely should keep looking. On that note, once we discover more, something in regards to either evidence or counter evidence to Planet 9, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Maybe support this channel on Patreon, and maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that I guess I'm not wearing right now, but you can find it in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.